Hartford Financial Wellness. Reach out to them for advice at 855-DON-GINO. And now back to your hosts, Don Getling and Gino Franti. You are back with uh, Don and Gino, Real Estate and Finance Show, every Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., sharing with you what you need to know, should know, and want to know about real estate, finance, and so much more. After six years, over six years now, and over probably 1,600 interviews, we're reaching out across the country to give you more. Yeah, and what you can do is you can go to our catalog or our hub, which is at donandgino.com. Click on the YouTube channel. That's where we've logged every show that we've ever done. And one of the things that's interesting about it is if you watch, if you wonder if our economy is better today than it was six years ago, just listen to our old shows and what the topics of our old shows were versus the topics of today's show. Uh, like I said, if you could track the progress, you could see that we went from distress to success. Oh, well, I bet you our guests can uh, share that with us from, the, from <laughs> distress to relate. success. <laughs> so today, uh, if you missed the first part of our show, and sorry you did, but luckily we record these just for you, which you can find on donandgino.com. We have Rob Cosberg, he is one of the authorities in marketing and business growth strategy and helping a lot of us, a lot of people across the country, bring that book out of themselves. 81% of us have a book inside, but 1% of us take action. And Rob, you should be very proud. You're helping more and more people figure out how to do that because I love your point. I, I know Gino has this question, but I'm just teeing up so everybody goes, why? Why should I listen to this guy? I love that you're helping people take the ideas because they'll go, I'm not a writer. How do I get a book out? But you're helping sure. them do that. So we're going to go into details of how to help more people bring the book out of themselves. Well, it's kind of a twofold thing now that you bring that up, right? Because I think that it's a very valid point, right? That we've come up with even chapters or names for books. I mean, we're probably a little more advanced that some people just haven't even gone that far. And then you say, how do I do this? Where's my first step? Where do I go? So I think you're doing a great service. But the thing I was thinking about last segment is you mentioned how it helped you explode your business. And that doesn't happen every time somebody writes a book. We know of a couple people that wrote a book personally. And um, yeah. He anyway. talks about that on his website. I read about that. I'm like, we know a few people. Hey, I wrote a book. And then you never hear about it again. Yeah, or the book is uh, disappointing or it doesn't get marketed well. So I guess... For me, is it is it the content in the book? Is it the marketing in the book? What's the secret recipe that actually does help you be able to ROI it or quantify the value in the book? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, yeah, the, the 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 bad news is even worse. Uh, <laughs> the bad news is the the average book uh, sells about two hundred copies in its lifetime. Wow. And and probably eighty percent of those no are friends. to the author and friends and family. That's exactly right. <laughs> So imagine, you know, sweating blood. Uh, you know, Ernest Hemingway used to say that, you know, you want to know how to be a writer? Sure, just stick a needle in your vein and bleed on paper. Uh, it's, it's, you know, oftentimes hard to do. Uh, imagine really grinding it out and then only 200 people in 20 or 30 years ever buy it. So Well, Gino doesn't have that many friends, so we may only get 100. <laughs> I'll have to buy them all. <laughs> His wife will buy them. <laughs> no, she won't. She doesn't even listen to the radio show. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I get it. Um, no, the, yeah, the, the key is, look, the content needs to be good. We tell that to our authors. Books are sold on covers and titles, so the cover and the title needs to be right. But the reality is, you know, there's so much noise in the marketplace that you have to have a great plan to launch and market your book. And, you know, the good news is that there's opportunities. There's everything from blogs and podcasts. There's dozens of websites, social media. Uh, we use all of these tools to, to launch our clients' books. So without, without question, it's hard, but without question, there's a process where it can be engineered for success. Well, we'll go, and I want to make sure because those are very clear steps. You go over it well on your on your website, and if you want to find out more from Rob Cosberg, again, authority in marketing, business growth strategies, and how to publish your own book, bestsellerpublishing.org, bestsellerpublishing.org, great information. I got some great information from you, and you have this nine-step process that we'll go over in the next segment because they're very detailed. Once you go through, they go, oh. That makes sense because right now it's overwhelming. You go, I'm not, I don't know how to write a book. I don't know how to get a book. I don't know how to promote a book. <laughs> exactly. So your nine steps, your cute little like nine step program. He's got little stickies and stuff. I'm like, it's so very user friendly though. <laughs> I feel good about it already. It's easier than the 12 step program. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gina, what step you on? 12 step program. That's another book title. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's funny when I talked about the ten steps to uh, uh, home ownership success. I didn't want to do twelve steps. Right. <laughs> I just know yeah. everybody look at that. Go, no, they're just going to see twelve steps and wonder what I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> so the title obviously is important. <laughs> All right. All right. We're here again with Rob Cosberg. Uh, you can find out more at robcosberg.org or bestsellerpublishing.org. All right. As promised and before we went to break, uh, you have these three steps, these three mistakes that a lot of us make when leaving the book that's inside of us, stay inside of us when we die. And I love, go through those three steps. They're great. I mean, yeah. Kim Kardashian's part of it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one of the, just a, a little bit of background. So one of the uh, secret ways or the secret sauce of getting on a lot of media, and you mentioned about the amount of media that I'm on, and I'm even more proud about the media that our clients get on because we, we actually book our clients for media. But one of the ways to do that is to have a celebrity attachment. So our three steps um, are the Kim Kardashian conundrum, the Tony Robbins trouble, and the Ernest Hemingway error. And the, uh, the Kim Kardashian conundrum is basically where so many people think, well, I'm just going to write my story because I have a great story and there's all this drama and I overcame all this adversity. And what we tell them is, look, if, if you want to write your story and your name isn't Kim Kardashian, then you're making a big mistake because no one wants to read your story uh, unless, <laughs> unless you're already a famous celebrity. Oh, you, you just know, hurt my listen. ego, though. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, but, but I'm here to help. So, I'm here to help. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it, everyone would want to read Hillary Clinton's biography or Kim Kardashian's autobiography, but Rob Cosberg, who's that guy? So what we suggest instead is you take your story and you fit it in to solving the problem of your ideal client. You can still tell your story. Beautiful. You just have to tell it in such a way that it solves their problem and is about them and not about you. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's a lot like the you messaging we talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had to learn that in radio and stuff instead of talking. It's funny, we had guests that start talking amongst themselves about their stories, and we even look going, do you have any, like, content here? Yeah, you know, we're on the radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you also have uh, the Tony Robbins Trouble. Yeah, Tony Robbins Trouble and Ernest Hemingway Error. So the Tony Robbins Trouble is thinking that you need to write a book that is completely unique, that no one has ever heard of or thought of before. And the reality is that's just foolish. Um, but I actually speak to authors or potential authors every week that have this problem. You know, they think, well, you know, my, my subject is, has been talked about before. Well, no kidding. And we call it the Tony Robbins trouble because, you know, Tony Robbins' last two books um, have been on the, the um, field of finances. And Tony Robbins is not known as a financial guru. No. He's known as a, as a life coach or performance coach, etc. But that didn't stop Tony from writing two New York Times best-selling books on finance. And did we really need another book on finance? I mean, there's a million of them. Right. But of course we did because, you know, Tony wrote from his own personal experience. So just because your topic has already been talked about, don't let that stop you from writing your book. Because you're going to write from your own personal experience, which is absolutely and completely unique. Well, so that's a, Tony Robbins' trouble. That makes sense. And you're going to help the uh, help them bring that out of them instead of them just writing again their story. You're going to write how it's going to affect others. Well, at the end of the yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we we have a team that helps with all of that. I would think that whoever's writing a book, their ultimate goal has got to be to inspire someone or to help someone not make the same mistakes that they've already made, to lead them down yep. a different road than the one they've gone down by showing them the mistakes that they've made. So if that's the case, and that's why people write books, I would think that it's okay to write about the same subject because it comes from a different perspective. It is, but you, you'd be surprised, and I agree with you 100%, but you'd be surprised the people that kind of have in their head, you know, I just can't do it. I, you know, I, I need to, to create this in such a way that it's totally unique. And that's foolish. I mean, it's going to be totally unique because it's your story. Right, right. All right. Well, I'm going to have to tease everyone now because we're not going to have, we don't have time to, before our next break to go into the Ernest Hemingway error. Who thought we'd be saying that when it comes about book writing? <laughs> Again, we're here with Rob Cosberg. You can find out more at bestsellerpublishing.org. Just a, a, a wonderful individual, just helping a lot of us bring the book out of ourselves. He's sharing with us the secrets and and he's helped so many people. We'll go into actually some of the books and some of the authors that he has been helping. 
and maybe he can help you bring the book out of you. We're enjoying just hanging out with just a really good guy that's helping a lot of us bring the book out. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about Ernest Hemingway error when we come back in just a few minutes. <laughs> 